So what do we base our selection criteria on? Well, we've already kind of hinted on that a little bit. Uh, visual appraisal is important. Uh, we've got to make sure that uh, we purchase bulls that are structurally sound, that can get out and move around, live a long life, as well as be able to breed those cows. Uh, we also like to see bulls and evaluate them for muscle and frame and just overall confirmation because uh, the reality is today for, for many of our producers, those cattle are going to be bought off of visual appraisal, what they look like when they go through a livestock market. And so uh, visual appraisal is important. And I also say, well, uh, as me as a rancher, I never want to have just an old sorry bull in my pasture that my neighbor could poke fun at as well. So visual appraisal is extremely important. Individual records, uh, birth weights, uh, weaning weights, those things are important as well. Even more important is expected progeny differences or EPDs. Uh, and uh, we'll discuss EPDs in depth as we get a little farther in this lecture. Uh, the ultrasound data uh, and the actual ultrasound data as well as the EPDs associated with that as well uh, are important. Uh, genetic markers may be something you look at uh, as well. Now, a lot of our breed associations now will take the genetic markers for a specific trait, whether it be marbling or tenderness, uh, and maybe incorporate that with other, ultra, with other carcass data, whether it be ultrasound carcass data or actual carcass data on some progeny of a particular bull, uh, and incorporate that into the EPD to, to do that calculation. So those are important. Ultrasound data, we get a lot of questions from ranchers, well, I don't, I wean all my calves, uh, and then they go directly to market. Uh, I'm not holding them and I'm not owning them through uh, harvest. And so for me, you know, what, what value is marbling or, or back fat or ribeye area? Well, one of the data points from an ultrasound perspective or carcass data would be ribeye area. Uh, even for a producer that's marketing their calves at weaning, because again, that's a quantitative trait. We can go in and measure the ribeye of a bull and that data point gives us an indication of how much muscling that animal has throughout its body. And so, and we do get paid for muscling in the calves, even if you sell them at weaning uh, at a local livestock market. Uh, so that's a way to capture additional value there. Uh, utilize all the available tools. For me personally, uh, I like to look at the data on the bull. Just like I showed you that sheet earlier, I like to go in and, and sort the bulls all out based upon their thresholds for EPDs that I think are desirable. And, and that's going to vary from operation to operation. If I'm selecting for a bull for first calf heifers, I'm putting a lot of emphasis on birth weight. If I'm selecting a bull for commercial operation where everything is sold at weaning, no replacements, I'm going to focus a lot on weaning weights and yearling weights and select heavily on those. Uh, but I like to look at the data first and figure out which bulls based on the data that I want to go in, go out and look at visually. Uh, then I go in and I, I select them based off the visual indication. So I, sort, I have a data sort and then I have a visual sort. Uh, some people say, well, why don't you sort them visually first? Well, me, personally, I'm a sucker for a good looking bull. And if I go out and I look at the bulls first, uh, then I begin to try to justify the data uh, because I like the look of that bull and so I always just sort the data first and then that way I don't get hung up on maybe a bull that I just think is eye appealing uh, there. So utilize all those data points that you have and the tools that you're available. Some of our objective measurements, uh, individual and progeny records for birth weight, weaning weight, average daily gain, feed efficiency, yearling weights, quality grade, yield grades, docility scores, there's tons of data points out there. And depending on the operation, uh, they're going to choose the data points that are important to them. So for, for an operation that may be um, uh, selling calves at weaning as well as keeping replacement females, they're probably going to be focusing on birth weight, weaning weight, yearling weight, maybe docility, longevity data points. They're going to be looking at milk uh, as well. Whereas an operation that's selling all their calves at weaning, it's a terminal operation, they may be looking at just birth weight, weaning weight, and yearling weight, and maybe ultrasound ribeye area uh, as well. So again, depending on your selection decisions, depends on which, which traits you really focus on. Uh, so the actual records, but 
as we really, we know from a, uh, efficacy of selection, expected progeny differences are really a, a tremendous tool that we have today to help us make selection decisions uh, in our operation. So let's discuss uh, EPDs and, and uh, what they are. Uh, we won't get into calculation on them, but, uh, but essentially an EPD is the most effective tool, that uh, genetic selection tool that we have. Uh, as we comb through the data and, and to begin to select cattle based off of performance. It adjusts the data for environmental effects uh, and so we can select cattle bulls that, that may have been, select from bulls that may have been raised in different locations in the United States. It also accounts for genetic relationships between the traits and among the animals as well. So uh, we know that there are relationships between weaning weight, and yearling weight, and birth weight. Uh, so it's accounting for those uh, as well. Uh, and most breeds are going to have EPDs for birth weight, weaning weight, yearling weight, going to have maternal EPDs. Majority of them also have carcass EPDs as well. Some of the breeds are a little more specialized and they may have uh, some maternal uh, EPDs or more terminal EPDs. Many of the breeds have also incorporated dollar value EPDs or indexes, and we'll talk about those as well. So, how is an EPD calculated? Uh, well, I spent a couple semesters uh, in college learning, out, learning how EPDs are calculated, uh, and it is very, um, very intense in how they're calculated. And essentially, uh, an EPD, in a nutshell, is just a statistical analysis on a specific trait. And so, for example, we've got this pedigree right here, and in this pedigree you can see the animal in the middle, and he's got a sire and a dam, and then the sire and the dam, they each have uh, their mother and father. And so that animal, as you can see in that pedigree, there's lots of data points there. Because each one of those animals hopefully has a birth weight, and each one of them has a weaning weight and yearling weight. Maybe there's carcass data on those animals. Uh, and then maybe this is an animal that's a proven sire. So uh, this is an AI sire. So now, in addition to all the information that's on the right side of the pedigree, now we've got information that's on the left side of the pedigree, which would be the progeny out of this particular animal as well. Uh, and so uh, that becomes to play. And so again, we've got data points. We've got the sire's birth weight, the dam's birth weight. We have the, the actual bull that we're looking at or cow that we're looking at, their birth weight uh, as well. Uh, and all of that data is, is dumped into a database. Now, there's relationships too. And so if we've got the, the birth weight on the individual animal, and we also have the birth weight on a grandsire, we would expect there's more emphasis placed on the birth, the actual birth weight of the animal versus one of a grandsire. So we've got these, these relationship coefficients that we put in there as well, and they're essentially weighting factors on the EPDs. And so again, sophisticated data analysis, we're not going to go into detail in it, uh, but they are effective and they are work, they do work, and they have been validated. Uh, and we can see over time how we've been able to make genetic progress, whether it be through, through improving birth weights, weaning weights, and yearling weights, and so on. But EPDs are one of the most effective genetic tools that we have. Uh, they're, they're also some of the most misunderstood, uh, and producers may question them as well. But I will tell you they are extremely valuable and they are a very effective resource that you can use at the commercial level and especially at the purebred level to begin to make changes. And so uh, an EPD is the difference in predicted performance of the future progeny of, uh, progeny of a sire dam. When we compare that to, when, when compared with that predicted from future progeny of bulls in the same sire growth, okay? Uh, so, the key point on an expected progeny difference is that last word, differences. Uh, if I just throw out, I've got a birth weight EPD on this bull of plus one, is that good or bad? Your response ought to be, no, I don't know. Now, if I said, well, the breed average is plus three, 
and the bull that we're looking at is plus one, well, he's two pounds lower for birth weight than the breed average. Uh, so we could look at that. Or we could compare that bull to another bull as well, and that's what we, we will do in an example here in just a minute. So essentially, it's just the estimated measure of the genetic impact of a particular parrot on his or her offspring. So we can begin to predict what those animals, their genetic ability is going to be, rather than just saying, okay, I'm going to select this bull because of he looks good. Uh, yeah, he looks good. Hopefully his calves will look good. But also, we have some data along with that and some history, um, a genetic analysis to where we can say, well, we're also pretty confident that his calves are going to be heavier at weenie than the other bull that we were looking at as well. So, again, we're looking at what that potential impact is.